Rate expressions and the rate of reaction going to be the topic in this first lesson on a whole chapter on kinetics. And kinetics is the study of all about how fast reactions are proceeding. And uh, it, towards the end of this course, we're going to study a whole chapter on thermodynamics. And thermodynamics is going to talk about spontaneity, whether reactions happen or not, and how much energy is either given off or absorbed in the reaction, things of this sort. But the, we'll find out that that's pretty much going to be able to tell us anything about a reaction we want to know, except for how fast. And that is the focus of kinetics here. And uh, we'll start off talking about rate expressions and how we can use those to determine the overall rate of a reaction, uh, no matter what reactant or product we're taking a look at. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep as well. You can find those courses at chadsprep.com. I'll be sure to leave links in the description. Now, this lesson's part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout the school year, so if you want to be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. Let's get into this. All right, so we're going to start with this lovely reaction here. And so here's the uh, decomposition of ammonia. Oftentimes we look at this in reverse, but I really want to look at it in this order on purpose. Uh, but two moles of ammonia, NH3, are going to decompose into one mole of nitrogen gas, N2 gas, and three moles of hydrogen gas, H2 gas. So in the stoichiometry here, this two to one to three ratio is kind of going to be pivotal here. Uh, what we're going to do is first start looking at the rates of these individual reactants and products. And we're going to start with N2. And uh, I'm going to actually give that to you. And I'm going to tell you the, the rate at which N2 is being produced in this reaction, let's just say, is 0.1 molar per second. And I could have given you, you know, it's going to have units of concentration per time. In fact, if we take a look, we'd often measure this rate as change in the concentration of N2 over change in time. And so anytime you look at that change, just remember that's final minus initial. And so delta N2 here would be final concentration of N2 minus initial concentration of N2. And then change in time is just passive time, T final minus T initial. But since T initial is usually zero, it's usually just whatever duration of time we're talking about. And so uh, this rate here is expressed in units of molarity over time. And that could be like, uh, you know, molarity per minute, molarity per second. So those are the most common. And technically it doesn't have to be molarity, but it's going to be uh, exclusively in this chapter. But you could have other units of concentration. So, but our brackets here definitely mean molarity. And so in this case, I've told you that the rate here in this case is 0.1 molar per second at which N2 is being produced. And so my question for you is going to be, well, what is the rate at which H2 is being produced? Well, we see that for every one mole of N2 being produced, we're going to produce three moles of H2, three times as many, which means it should have triple the rate. And so if we take a look at the change in the concentration of H2 over the change in time, that should be triple that number, so 0 0.3 molar per second. And then if we go back and take a look at the rate at which NH3 is being used up here in this case, and again, we're just going to look at the rate of change, though. That'll be important here in a second. So we'll take a look at that change in the concentration of ammonia over the change in time. And what we're going to find out is that whereas product concentrations go up, and when you have an increase, that's associated with a positive change, but reactant concentrations are going to go down as they're being consumed. And if you do final minus initial, you'll find out that that decrease corresponds to a negative change. And so for the, a reactant here, this change in concentration over change in time is actually going to come out to a negative number. Cool. Now, in this case, we can see again that for every one mole of N2 being produced, we're going to consume two moles of NH3, twice as many. And so its rate's going to be twice as big as that of N2. And so in this case, it'll be 0 0.2 molar per second. Cool. So now we've got three different rates here, one for N2, one for H2, one for NH3. So however, there's something called the rate of reaction. So and there's only one rate of reaction, not three. And so we gotta figure out well, what is this rate of reaction? Well, it turns out this rate of reaction is 0 0.1 molar per second. But how do we get there and why is it that way and things of this sort? And so it turns out that rates of reaction are always positive. So you should first know that they're not negative. So, and the rate of reaction is essentially gonna be whatever the rate for anything on, a, as on the product side that has a coefficient of one. And that's why it ends up matching what it is for the case of N2. And so if we look, these rates of reaction, you actually get these from these rate expressions. And so in this case, we could have the change in N2 
over the change in time, and that would be what we call a valid rate expression. If you calculate this out, just like we was given here in this case, uh, it will give you the rate of the reaction. It's not only the rate of change for N2 over time, it's the rate of the reaction, we say. So it's more formally the rate of the entire reaction. Now, if we try to do the same thing here, again, for the change in H2 over the change in time, well, that's not going to be equal to the rate of reaction. It's three times bigger. And so what you've got to do is you actually got to divide by that coefficient, which oftentimes we just write as a fraction instead. So we could have just put a three in the denominator here or just multiply by one third, same diff either way. And so notice uh, in this case, on the top example here, this would have come out to 0 0.1 molar per second. And in this case, notice it's going to be one third times 0.3, and it's still going to come out to 0 0.1 molar per second. Cool. So that's why it's a valid rate expression. These rate expressions take the rate of an individual reactant or product so and convert it by some factor into an overall rate of reaction, which is always the same. All right, so moving on here with NH3. And once again, if we just had change in the concentration of NH3 over the change in time, we'd end up again with this negative 0.2 molar per second. So first thing we got to do is put a negative sign in there. That way, a negative times a negative 0.2 is going to come out to a positive number. And again, rates of reaction are always positive. And the other thing we got to do is, again, once again, divide by the coefficient. In this case, dividing by 2. And again, whether I just put a 2 in the denominator down here or put a 1 half out in front, you'll see both. They're both customary. It means the same thing. And notice negative 1 half times negative 0.2, because again, this is negative 0.2 molar per second, times negative 1 half is once again going to get us the same value here of 0.1 molar per second. So questions you might see on this uh, of this sort are, are, what is a valid rate expression for this reaction? And any one of these three expressions, including these fractions here, would be the valid rate expressions. The students don't often realize what they mean. They just memorize that's what a rate expression looks like. But the key is they take any reactants or products, change in concentration over change in time, and converts it into the overall rate of reaction. That's what a rate expression accomplishes. So uh, if you get any individual reactant or product, and you're given one of the rates, you should be able to find the others like we did here. We took, uh, I gave you the 0.1 molar per second for N2 over time, and then we've translated that and figured out what the change in H2 over time or change in NH3 over time would be as well. So you should be able to do that. You should be able to determine any valid rate expression as well and find the overall rate of reaction. And one last thing I just want to give you here so that you'll be very careful. So if again for this reaction, based on all the data I've got up here, if I said, what is the change, uh, what is the, the change in the concentration of N2 over time? 0.1 molar per second. So if I said, what is the rate uh, at which N2 is being produced? 0.1 molar per second. If I said, what is the rate of change or the rate of production for H2? It would be 0.3 molar per second. But for reactants, you got to be very careful. If I said, what is the rate of change for the concentration of NH3 over time? It would be negative 0.2 molar per second. But what if instead of saying the rate of change, what if I said the rate of consumption? And this is where you've got to be careful. If I say rate of consumption, that means I already know that that concentration is going down. It's being consumed. It's being used up. And so the rate of consumption is not negative 0.2 molar per second. It's just 0.2 molar per second. So be careful for reactants. The rate of change is negative. Because if all I say is change, I don't know if it went up or went down. You need to tell me. But if I say rate of consumption, that's not the case. So you just give the overall absolute value of that number for reactant. So kind of look at it this way. Let's say that, uh, you know, I know that you went to the casino on Friday. So when I say, how did you do on Monday when you come back to, you know, class and stuff? And so, and you say, hey, I lost 50 bucks. And I'm like, okay, you lost 50 bucks. And I said, no, no, no. I just want to know what's your rate of change. And well, you go, well, negative 50 bucks. So... But if I know that you're a horrible poker player and there's no way you win because you never win, and so instead of saying, how did you do or what's your rate of change or something like this, I said, how much did you lose? Are you going to say negative 50 bucks or are you just going to say 50 bucks? Because if I said, how much do you lose? And you say negative 50 bucks, I'm going to be like, 
does that mean he gained 50 bucks, but you never win, you know? And so the idea is when I say, how much did you lose? I already know that your overall net worth went down. You don't have to tell me it's negative. I already know that it's implied in the question. And you would just say 50 bucks, not negative 50 bucks. That's the same thing going on here. Again, if I say rate of change for reactant, you better tell me it's negative. But if I say the rate at which it's consumed or the rate at which it's used up, then I already know it's going down. And you're just going to give me the absolute value of just plain old 0.2 molar per second in this case. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, hit that thumbs up button. Best thing you can do to let YouTube know that other students need to see this lesson as well. And let me know in the comment section what was helpful and if you've got any questions I haven't quite cleared up in this lesson. Now, if you're looking for the study guides that go with this lesson, if you are looking for practice materials on kinetics, check out my general chemistry master course. I'll leave a link in the description. A free trial is available. Happy studying.